Yo guys, how's it going? So the GTX 970 is one beast of a graphics card, especially the MSI Gaming Edition. However, if you want to overclock your GPU manually, here's how. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so the program that I'm going to use is called MSI Afterburner. You probably have heard of it because it's a very popular GPU overclocking program. Of course, you don't have to use this and you can use any program that you desire. And in case you're curious, I am using a skin. The skin I'm using is called MSI Gaming Afterburner Skin. I like the skin just because it gives all the information straightforward and it's very easy to see and very intuitive. Of course, matter of personal preference. Now, when you're overclocking your GPU, you always want to make sure that you have a benchmarking program running in the background. That is so if you overclock too high, you'll see artifacts in the program which will tell you that your overclock is too high. And that's better than waiting until you go in game and countering a crash within the game. Now the benchmark I'm going to use is called Haven. It's a popular and free benchmarking tool. A lot of people also like to use FutureMark which is really good. So again, it's a matter of personal preference. But you want to make sure that you actually have this running to your full resolution. So I'm going to hit this to 920 by 1080 and have the quality, I'm going to put down ultra, just so immediately I can see the boost clock when we run this. So I'm going to go to run. Okay, so it's going to start the benchmark. And I'm just going to move this over to my second monitor. Again, you want to have this running just so that you can see the any tears happening or anything else. So I also like to have the program GPU-Z running, just so I can also see the core clock here and the temperature and memory. It doesn't really matter, but you know I just like seeing that too. So when we start overclocking, the first thing that I like to do is to unlink the power limit and the temperature limit. And I'm going to increase the power limit all the way up to 110%. I'm going to keep the temperature limit the same just because I don't want to get getting too hot. So let's hit apply. So the next thing to do is to change your core clock and memory clock. Now some people like to do the memory clock first and then the core clock. I don't really think it matters. I just do the core clock first. So I'm going to go here. Now generally I know that 200 plus 200 megahertz will crash my GPU. So I'm gonna go right now to 150. And with the memory clock, I'm gonna say also, I'm just gonna go to 200. So that's why I say it's very important to have this benchmark running in the background, just so you can see any artifacts or anything else happening. So I'm gonna go that and hit apply. Okay, as you see, we just increased the boost clock. We're at 1478, which is awesome. I can go a little bit higher. However, I might need to increase the voltage. Now here's the thing with the voltage. You really want to avoid a voltage increase if you can, just because increasing the voltage will shorten the duration of your graphics card lifespan. Not by much, but still, if, if you can avoid this, just avoid doing it. Now I'm actually just going to go over to my save profile right here, which has all my stuff set. And next to my save profile, I have the core clock set to 175, memory clock 200, and a voltage increase by 10. So let's hit apply. And as you can see, that gets me to 1.5 gigahertz speed. And as far as the benchmarking tool, at this point, everything is stable. There's no artifacts. Let's pull this over here a little bit so you can see this. No artifacts and everything is working fine. I normally keep this running for an hour. Just to be sure that these settings are stable. And also, it's good to monitor your temperature while this is happening. Let's just bring this up again. Right now, I'm at 63 degrees. This is under 100% load according to GPU-Z. We're actually under 94%, which is pretty good, and 99%. So we're at 63 degrees. Again, every graphics card is made differently. So the settings that I use might not work with you, and your settings might not actually work with my card. So that's why it's a really a big trial and error process. But anyway, here's how to overclock your 970. So guys, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, suggestions, which could help improve, definitely leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.